Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to the next lesson in this quick start course for On One Photo Raw 2022. In this lesson, we're going to be using the time lapse feature, the HDR feature, the pano feature, and also the focus stacking feature inside of Photo Raw 2022. So let's first start with the time lapse feature. It's an all new feature and it's an awesome way to build time lapse video from your still photos. So what I've done is I've navigated to a folder that I have a set of time lapse sequences in. So I've found this group of cloud images that is about 250 images in total. So what I'm going to do before I actually send these images to the time lapse creator is I'm going to apply a black and white preset to them. So let's just select all of these images here. Then I'll head over here to the presets tab. I'm going to go back out. I'll head over here to black and white modern. And let's use this B1 preset. I'll just select that. And that will apply this preset to this entire group of images. So now that I've applied that black and white preset to all of these images, I can head over here to the time lapse creation module. I'll select that. And now I have this time lapse creation dialog here. Let's start here with this preview dialog. If I want to preview the time lapse frame by frame, I can just drag this slider and you can see I'm previewing that time lapse in real time. There's a couple more options over here on the right. We first have our input. So for inputting raw images, we can choose to use the embedded JPEG, use the fast raw, or use the full raw data in that image. We can modify the size. We can give it a letterbox to not crop the image. We can modify the codec, the quality in case we want to create a proof for testing. We can modify the frame speed. And we can also adjust the actual speed if we need to slow down the duration of the time lapse or we need to speed up the duration of the time lapse. If we have any movement or exposure changes, we can use these two options to detect those and smooth them out. Once we have all of these options selected and modified, for our liking, let's head down here to create video. And once it's done exporting, you can view the video. And there's your time lapse created from your still photo sequence. If you're looking to create HDR images, navigate to where those photos live, select all of the exposure brackets in your sequence, and then head over here to HDR. Once you've selected HDR, this option will ask you your preferred default look. I typically go with natural, but if you like any of these settings more, feel free to choose these. In this HDR dialog, we have a preview of our HDR image. We have the exposure brackets at the bottom, and then we have modifiers we can use to adjust how this image is merged together. Let's start down here with these exposure brackets and also these modifiers above them. The first modifier is deghosting. If we turn deghosting off, we'll have a lot of movement between our frames and you can see that there's some blurring going on. If you don't want this to happen, you can turn this deghosting option on and this will try to maintain detail in the HDR image across the exposure brackets. When it comes to deghosting, you need to choose which image your deghosting is based off of. You can see that with this image here, it's using the details in the water as the deghosting method. If I want to modify the look of the deghosting, I can simply choose a different photograph. We next have our default look, which we chose earlier, but you can also modify here. We then have open in. 
I typically open this up inside of the effects tab because I've already modified the develop settings, my tone and color settings right here. Another thing we can modify down here with these exposure brackets is the exposure brackets that are actually merged together. So if I don't want to merge any of these exposure brackets, I can deselect them with this check mark option here. I can also set my base exposure by selecting this option on one of the images. And you can see now that this is the base exposure, 0, 0, and it goes down from there. I think I like this one right there. So now inside of this HDR area, I'm going to modify the tone and color really quickly with this tone and color section. I'm going to go into my on one camera profiles and I'll choose on one landscape. Then I'm going to choose this AI auto button here to automatically develop my images tone settings. We then have this HDR look tab. This will allow us to modify the look of our HDR image. Once we have all of these settings the way we want them, let's just choose save. <clears throat> and once we've saved the image, it opens that image up right inside of the effects tab and we can start styling it and modifying the look. So let's head over here to the add filter option and let's add on one last filter. Let's just add on a nice vignette. I'll use this preset big softy and that'll make sure these edges around the scene are darkened up so that we're really focused in on the middle areas. To create a panorama, I've navigated to a series of images that I shot while panning across a scene in Seattle. To stitch these three photographs together into one cohesive panoramic image, I need to select the images, and then I'm going to go to this pano option. And in this create panorama dialog, we can see it's created a preview of those three images stitched together. Over here in the options, we can modify the type to either be a spherical or a collage. Spherical is what you're used to shooting where you are shooting from a specific location and you pan across a scene. Collage is when you're walking across a scene. Let's say you're photographing a mural on a wall and you start at the beginning of a mural and you photograph down the line. That would be a collage type. I typically keep mine at auto. We then have edges, so you can crop the edges or you can warp to fill. I typically use crop. We then have our file size. We can reduce the file size in half by choosing 50% or we can use the whole file at 100%. In open in, we can modify where we open this image up. I again typically choose effects so I can start modifying the look. We can also add in panoramic metadata if we need to. Let's just choose save. And we have this panorama photograph that we can start modifying with the effects tab. To create a focus stacked image, navigate to the images that you want to focus stack, select the photographs, and then head over here to the focus stack option. Inside the focus stacking dialog, I can see a preview of the focus stacked image from these five different exposures. I can modify which images are in the focus stack by deselecting them or selecting them. Up here in these different modifiers, I can choose where I want to open this image up whether it's develop, effects, or I want to return to browse. I can also modify the depth of field. 
So if I want to remove some of the sharpness from the front or remove some of that sharpness from the back, I can do that with this depth of field slider here. Once I have the focus stacked image the way I want it, I can select save. And it's opened up that focus stacked image right inside of the effects tab. And I can start getting creative with the different filters.